The latest in the gayest podcast is intended for listening by adult members of the LGBTQIA plus community and their allies. Discussions may contain material not suitable for folks under the age of 18. Listener discretion is advised. This week, we discuss a real gas on the Drag Race episode. And we talk about New York City's new mayor and his problematic pick. All this and more on the latest in the gayest. Oh, wow. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I didn't realize I was doing a podcast with Jimbo. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of the latest and the gayest. With your host, me, Josh. And some hoary sex clown. From Canada. Named Alex. Hi. Yes, I'm a horny sex clown. From Connecticut instead. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Send me fan mail. Yes. Um, Joshua. Oh, wow. I, I People don't call me Joshua, so it's weird to hear it, but yeah. yes. <laughs> Is you only it's it's fun you only get like I, I'm sure I'm not the only one but like you get you, it's always like when you get the full name treatment from when yeah, you're, yeah when your parent, you're in trouble. your parents is like Joshua see but here's the thing here's the thing that like happens in my life that I observe if my parents should have talked to me that way I would be like oh what what Alex what do you want huh what's the problem just floating up a river like <laughs> throat slit. Yeah, no, I, 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 I can imagine my parents talk to me that way. But like, there are also people. I, I'm uh, 23, and I just, I mean, maybe just because I'm a different point in my life, but I just couldn't imagine my parents talk to me like that, or like just letting it slide. But I know there are people that are older than me that are like, oh, oh, he, yes, dad, and be like, fucking hello, can you like grow a backbone? But like, whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, I luckily my my parents were never. I mean, like, you know, they they did. My mother very much when I whenever I was in trouble, she would you know do the typical Alexander. Oh, I got I got the Joshua Stephen. Get over here now, and I'd be like, Ooh. Yeah. Did you what? Uh, did you ever have like a signature kind of like timeout, or like what was your? Oh God, what see, was your like what was their go to punishment? Well, for here's you? the thing. Punish- okay, as a the, oh my God, I have my relationship with discipline is very strange because it came from it, it was just because my parents are divorced and kind of what it was before they got my parents got divorced my mom my mom was never good at delivering punishment or discipline so it's kind of my dad's job to do it and it's, it was kind of weird because like it really affected my like way of like viewing my father because like little we... did he know <laughs> that that would translate into a a kink list a kink list longer yeah. than the declaration of independence oh my god yeah but no but it's, it's weird so um we never really had like a signature like just you're grounded no phone uh you know but like really honestly like since my parents are always so busy and because they've worked so much like what were they really gonna do and also like but we were smart kids we didn't get caught yeah <laughs> i remember we like there's like this picture on our wall and for years, my mom didn't know that it was, like, missing glass. And it's supposed to have glass, and I just didn't. I love that for you. Also, oh, my God, something, too. Um, We would we had a neighbor, Miss Lee, and there are times where she definitely covered for us. <laughs> she was like, she'd be like, you kids, you, you need to stop doing this bullshit. But, like, let's get this cleaned up before your mom gets home. There was, I remember this one time. I was, you know, it's funny. When I was younger, I I remember this one time. Me and some of my friends, we were playing the, uh, did you ever play Manhunt? Uh, is that kind of like... It's basically like hide and seek. Hide and seek, but, but like, like aggressive. You gotta... Yeah, but like as soon as you see like the seeker, you gotta like bolt for your life. Yeah, we, well, yeah, we definitely played that kind of stuff. Well, we, yeah. we, we, we were crazy kids. We, we also threw crab apples at wasp nests. I love that. Just for funsies. Um, but yeah, we, we, we engaged in manhunts. Yeah, we, um, there was, there's an, ap- there was an apartment complex. It's, it's still there. Um, there's an apartment complex down at the end of the street, uh, that I grew up on. And behind the apartment complex is this, uh, this brook that, you know, me and some of my friends, we did go swimming in there mm-hmm. quite a bit, but in retrospect, looking back on that, 
it was probably a really terrible idea because that quote unquote brook, I'm like 95% sure led to the sewers. Oh God. So, it so was like... we, in there, there were a few times we, we, uh, went in with, a. Not not as many items of clothing on as Ooh. one would normally go swimming in. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that probably was a terrible idea. Yeah, that could have definitely led to some. Yeah, I pr- I probably could have grown like an extra foot or something. Ugh. No, I t- totally. We did the kind of same thing. We kind of go back to getting in trouble. I remember we used to like we had a pond in our backyard, which again also I think might have gone to the sewers because it had this, this drainage thing. But we didn't swim in it, but we, we caught turtles in it. Oh. And one time, this kid that was not as good at catching turtles as we... I, I, was, I was not very good at it all, but my little brother definitely was. He caught those turtles really easily. He knew his shit? He did. He did. Because we, we watched uh, the Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. Oh, yeah. And so we were like, we're Steve Irwin. We're catching turtles. Oh, my God. And this kid, we were telling this kid, like, yeah, don't... We were telling the kid, like, yeah, don't put your finger in his face. The, the, when we caught the turtle... Mm-hmm. Do not put your finger near its mouth. That's going to bite you. Yeah. And he, this kid did that. And and it bit the fuck out of his finger. Yep. And he was like, ah! And like my little brother was holding it, the turtle. And he dropped the turtle because he got like scared. So like this, I want to say like at least like 10, 12 pound turtle had its like grip on this like eight year old's finger. Yeah. I don't know how it, that finger just didn't come right off. Oh, yeah. And yeah, we got we got like moderate trouble for that, and we yeah, we continued to catch turtles again. We were like yeah, we were kind of hard to like yeah, there. I remember. Oh my god. Okay, this was there was this one time. This in this memory will like stick with me. Mm-hmm. There was this one time I remember. I was it was I think it was at like a birthday party of mine. I was in middle school, I believe, and we were playing manhunt, mm-hmm. and. I was, yeah, it was me and me and one other person. We were chasing this kid who we'll call, uh, um, we're going to call him Bobbert. Bobbert. Yeah. Bobby. Or, yeah. We're going to call him Bobby. No, Bobbert. Actually. Yeah. Bobbert. I like Bobbert a that's lot. A, that's a better. Yeah. Okay. So we were chasing me and a, me and a friend of mine, we were chasing Bobbert. Mm-hmm. And it was in the little like this. So near surrounding that brook behind the apartment complex uh-huh. is just like this very small little like woodsy area. Mm-hmm. It was like because this was also keep in mind, it was in the suburbs. So it, again, it was very small, but it was like big enough that we could kind of like run around and play. Mm-hmm. And we were chasing Bobbert and Bobbert was ahead of us and he was approaching he was like looking back at us to make sure that, you know, we weren't catching up to him. Uh huh. But Bobbert was fast approaching a down tree that at the height of a middle schooler mm-hmm. is right about where your forehead is. Oh no. So he's running and running and we see that he's headed for the down tree and we can see that he's going to run into it. So we're like, Hey, Bobbert, look out. You're going to hit a tree. And then he's like, turns around to see. He's like, what are you talking about? Turns around. Literally, the second he turns his head, he slams into that down tree and Mm. like falls on the ground. And this poor kid, he was, you know, he was in a lot of pain because he like slammed into that thing. And he didn't have like a concussion or anything, but oh my God, we were, all of us were, we had to like stop the game and we like went to go find everybody else to be like, Hey guys, uh, we're stopping the game for a second. Uh, um, cause Bobbert's like actually Bobbert really hurt. shit. Like, and this is not just like a joke. So, uh, please come out now. We're, we're, we're going to stop for a bit, but yeah. Oh my God. That the, in that whole... did he bleed like was it like big like gash um a little bit okay but not like to the point where he needed stitches or anything luckily but there's oh my god there's this there's another time when we uh i was in this was also i was in elementary school when this happened um so we were we were 
kind of like we were, you know, little kids were hanging out behind the apartment complex. And there's this old man who lives in at the time. I don't know if he's still alive, but at the time he was living in one of the apartments uh, and we were kind of in like the back parking lot, just, mm-hmm. you know, acting like kids. And we, I guess we were being a little bit too loud for his liking. And he like stuck his head out his window and was like, if you kids don't shut up, I'm going to like call the cops on you. He was, you know, standard cranky old man. Yeah. But us being elementary school kids, we were like, are we going to get in trouble? Oh, my God. And we, like, ran back to my house, and we were like, Mom, what do we do? And He's she, calling the police if we're going to go yeah, to jail. And she's like, honey, you're fine. He's just really cranky. I, I promise you'll be okay. He's not actually See, going to call the police on you. If I were your mom, I would have rocked that old man's shit. <laughs> I'd have been like, they're kids. Calm the fuck down. Do not, do not be threatening my children like that with the yeah. police because when you're a kid they're, that kind of stuff scary yeah, they're kids they're Calm little the fuck they're down. literally just children but anyway so before we we do anything else i have a little surprise oh for... we do so recently for those of you who don't know coca-cola came out with a new limited release called coca-cola starlight not now, an ad this is not yeah, this just this is not a plug. Um, this episode is not sponsored by Coca-Cola. No. Um, but so the company has like chosen to not mention what exactly the flavor is. It's just described <sighs> well, as a dash. This is and I quote a dash of the unexpected. I'd like to say, too, I don't think many people really can pinpoint what Coca-Cola's flavor That's generally true is. That's true as well. I think it's prune. Coca-Cola in I, general. I saw somewhere that it's prune, but like... I don't even know. It's it's it's, a, it's its own thing. Yeah. But today, live... Well, I guess it technically wouldn't be live because uh, by the time this episode's come out, it will, it will have been a couple days. But here, live. Today, live. <laughs> live for you. Live for the three people in this room. <laughs> um, we are going to have, now I have already tasted this, so I already know like how weird it tastes today. We are going to have Joshua and Josh, our, damn, I'm drop gonna, the full name again. <laughs> we are going to have Josh and our extra special guest, our technical producer, Lance. I'm going to get, I have uh, I bought a little 12 pack of the Coca-Cola starlight the other day at target. And I'm going to have them try it. I only get one. And Damn. see if they can pinpoint what exactly the flavor is. Wait, do you know what the flavor is? No. Oh, okay. That's why I'm trying to get you two to figure it out. So, Lance, say hi. Hi. It's zero sugar. Yeah, I got the zero sugar okay, version. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have a conversation about the zero sugar in a little bit. <laughs> No, because we'll get to it. Don't worry. All right. Only 35 milligrams. Okay. I don't think that's the selling point. <laughs> yeah, that's not the... That's I don't not, think that's what we're concerned about if, right I now. I don't know if that's the point of this uh, this thing here. here. Wait, I'm going yeah. to give the kids an ASMR open, experience. Open it. Oh, that was satisfying. <sighs> that was satisfying. Mm, still got right. it. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Uh, I didn't even taste it. I was busy, like, coughing. Oh, no. Okay. All right, so tell me. Cotton candy. You think cotton candy? Yeah, synthetic cotton candy. Very fake sugar. I was... So, this is what I thought... I was tasting elements of, like, cream soda or, like, almost... Have you ever had sarsaparilla? No. It, It... it is reminiscent of vanilla Coke. Yeah, a little bit, right? Reminds me like, of carnival. Maybe, yeah. or maybe like a little bit of raspberry, almost? Like a tad. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it'd be like a berry-flavored cotton candy yeah. is what I'm getting. Okay. Every sip tastes different. <laughs> it's, your, it's, it's your taste buds dying. Coca-Cola ASMR. Yeah, it, to me, it, it tastes like I'm getting cotton candy. 
Well, All right. synthetic cotton candy tastes a little bit like cream soda. Yeah, I, I, I see that. I see that. Also, when's, I don't know the last time I've had cotton candy, to be totally honest. Oh. Neither have I. I'm not 12 anymore. Oh, no, I'm not Does, three You anymore. don't have to be 12 to enjoy cotton candy. Ages, like, 13 have cotton candy? No, anything? because, you know, I don't know, as you get older, your relationship with sugar changes. That's so, like, true. Do I, do, am I really going to subject myself to just eating sugar strands? Mine has kind of stayed very similar, but that's that's just because I inherited well, a... I inherited a big sweet tooth from my grandmother. Oh, I'm right there with you. I mean, I'm I'm you know the baker of here. I, I always say I I do not have a sweet tooth. I have a full mouth of sweet teeth. Honestly, okay. So it seems Josh's vote is for cotton candy. Yeah. All right, Lance. What do you think? <coughs> What's your vote? Can we hear Lance? I mean, it'll be so like what? in the background. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to like shout? Yeah. All right. So what's your what's your vote for this? I would say something between cotton candy and <laughs> that was my first thought, but kind of cream soda also fits it. Yeah, it's really sugary. It, yeah, that's the thing. Like, well, in another story. another thing too is he, okay. if you have you had like Coke Zero, uh huh, it's sweeter than regular Coke. Like, it is sweeter than regular it is. Coke. It's like it's even different than like Diet Coke. Like it's it's a it's like its whole thing. Mm-hmm. So. The Coke Zero aspect of it probably, you know, adds it might, something. Yeah. But I don't know. Anyway, but you know what Here's, we should do? Oh, I have one more thing. I don't oh. know. I want one more comment about this. I don't know if I would call this flavor Starlight. What would you What would you have named it? Coca-Cola, take notes. Yeah, I don't know if I would have done... I, I would have been like... Again, like it's, it tastes very berry and like sweet and like like Carnival Coke. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is Carnival Coke. This isn't Star, Starlight needs to be more like... It needs to be more out there. Okay. I I, I I identified it. I I noticed the flavor too quickly for it to be something is like ethereal and like uh, as Starlight. It's a Coca Cola that uh, self identifies as a cotton candy. Yeah. So Coca Cola, you ain't shit. Your marketing team ain't shit. You ain't shit. And we're gonna go. Yeah. Before I get my diss track for Coca Cola. And we're back. Next up. Let's get into some queer quandaries. And now, let's get into this week's top stories. Newly elected mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, is supposedly considering former city council member Fernando Cabrera for a, quote, faith-based position in his administration. In 2014, while Cabrera Cabrera was visiting Uganda in 2014, shortly after the country passed legislation making homosexuality illegal and punishable by life in prison, the pastor expressed his support for the law and made it clear he felt the country was on the right path, unlike the United States. An earlier version of the legislation would have provided for the death penalty in some cases. However, it was struck down in court due to a legal technicality. This isn't the first time Adams has considered putting Cabrera up for a position in his administration. Previously, he was considered to have him lead his office of community health, but withdrew him from consideration following backlash from activists earlier in the month. Adams responded to the allegations saying, quote, we can agree to disagree. And that is his administration in that he can do what he wants. Hello. (laughs) And next, we also have a little bit of an update for the uh, Don't Say Gay Bill in uh, Florida. The specific part that they changed um, after backlash uh, from the LGBTQ community is that instead of it saying they are banning encouraging discussion or something along those lines and now it changed from that part to specifically saying it's banning instruction of you know conversations of instruction like formal instruction on sexuality and gender identity on thursday the canadian women's ice hockey team faced off against team usa in their match for the 2022 winter olympics and in the end canada was victorious 
The team has been making history recently as they were recently recognized for having seven out LGBTQ plus team members, making them the most LGBTQ plus exclusive Winter Olympic team of all time. According to NBC News, they are now tied with the Dutch women's soccer team that competed in the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics. Also, fun fact, at the 2020 Tokyo uh, Olympics, the Canadian women's soccer team took home the gold. And what you know made this kind of special was that they were the first team in history to compete and win the gold with the first trans athlete. <gasps> Uh, his name is Quinn. No, no last name, just Quinn. <laughs> Which, fierce. Shout out to Quinn. You go, Quinn. But also shout out to uh, the Canadian women's ice hockey team. Y'all are, you know, I know I should be rooting for like Team USA here, but like. It kind of sounds like the Canadians women's teams are like really out here to like show off. Girls, y'all are doing it. The Canadian girls. Like cause... Canadian, like uh, women in general. Yeah, of course. We just stand women in this podcast. I love women. I'm gay, but oh, like, I was gonna say, ooh. yeah, I'm. I am a homosexual. But put your money where your mouth is. God, women are fantastic. Anyway, and finally, in uh, uh, excuse my pronunciation here, in uh, Ahmedabad, India, three men were arrested for using grinder to basically mug gay men, oh. and it didn't. Spe- I didn't see if it, I can't remember if it specified if it was violent or not, but they were definitely like stealing money from these folks. And it had a lot to, the way they were getting away with it is that um, India is not as advanced as we are in our acceptance of the LGBTQ community. Mm. And um, only in 2018 has, you know, gay sex been decriminalized. Yeah. Um, so that's how kind of far along they are. So they were, a lot of the, what they were banking on is that um, they would commit these crimes and they were banking on these men that they were mugging to be more ashamed of their identity than they were enraged by like the actual like theft. So like they're thinking like, okay, so they're going to, they're in order to preserve their like kind of like image, they're not going to like out themselves and like report this, but eventually someone did and they are, have now been arrested. Oh my God. That just like there, uh, I remember there was this, I heard a similar story mm-hmm. and that's like the thing to, for the people who know what grinder is, mm-hmm. you know that you can be as anonymous and down low as you want to be. You can be like DL Daddy Top 69, mm-hmm. you know, the house down boots. DL Daddy Top looking for tight twink pussy to rail in my wife's minivan. Yeah, nice, nice Porsche Cayenne moment. <laughs> um, but like, you know, it's. It's very discreet. Mm -hmm. It can be. Yeah. And that's a thing that presents itself a lot of issues because Mm -hmm. this isn't, you know, this isn't the first time that people have used Grindr to be like, hey, I'm looking for a fun night in. You want to come over to my place and get it on? And And then, then like, it's a life-threatening situation. Yeah. It's, uh, again, a, a, a group... I think this serves as like two pretty, ed- oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Two big reminders, I'll just say, because I'm not, I, I could just say big. I'm not trying to use big words to impress anybody here. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's okay. We're most most people listening to this show don't uh, don't care about our large knowledge of the English language. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, a big reminder that we a be very careful on these apps. Yes. To be very careful in general. I think in general. Mm-hmm. When you're meeting strangers, yeah. be careful. Absolutely. Um, but also, let's also not take for granted how accepting things are here and how far we've come. Because in India, like I was saying, in only 2018, the, you know, was, you know, gay sex legalized. I mean, I haven't looked into that aspect as much, but, yeah. um, you know, it, it, we're, we are very far and we have a lot of, we, we have a lot of rights and privileges as being gay in America in this part of the world specifically that I think we take for granted and, you know, absolutely, you know, not the gay news doesn't always have to be about, you know, uh, I don't know, like 
some porn some star porn got stars into a fight is, with yeah. another porn star. Yeah. You know, there there are people in other countries who are fighting for basic LGBTQ rights, and we need to yeah amplify those voices. Well, it can't always be about you know. Absolutely. You know, people in it's some some you know people in America. I think we we've gotten so used to the idea of just being able to like go out and you know hook up with some random person from grinder and like mm-hmm. you know that's just a casual thursday evening for some people and we you know we don't think about it mm-hmm. but for people in other countries going out with somebody of the same sex can like risk you can you'll and be like endangering your life mm-hmm. like you know like i said in the story about the guy who uh who's like the new the new york mayor i was just about to say yeah, yeah he we cannot in grow U- complacent yeah about in uganda the things we have their being gay is punishable by life in prison so we you know we here in the united states we take so many things for granted because of what we have but you know we cannot we we can't forget yeah we exactly. cannot forget and we also need to like i i'm, I'm very glad because like if, if i remember right like this guy is no no longer being considered for a position right um as far as i know yeah he was it, he's yeah he's received he received like a ton of backlash obviously because you know this is the mayor he's the mayor of new york city and new york city alone is known for their like New York City Pride is mm-hmm. one of the biggest pride festivals that like happens. Mm-hmm. And New York City has always been a very like inclusive community. Yep, I exactly. Feel. Yeah. So this guy he receives like a ton of backlash and as far as I know, you know, support for him is uh is hopefully dying. Well, so wait, because uh, it was the mayor is gonna was gonna recommend him for uh some, it, it was like yeah, a religious like, thing. Yeah, right? it was a it religious was... based uh, position on his team. Um, so he uh, uh, again, like I can't imagine that. Like, I'd like to think that you know separation separation of church and state. Uh, th- his position, he would really have no like legislative power. But at the same time, I still do not want someone that outwardly homophobic to like hold any position of no power. no because that it, it would be it would be a fucking massive step in the wrong direction exactly again as, as i was saying like we can't take these things for granted we have to i'm, I'm glad people but so wait so i i, I uh, uh well, he he's no longer being considered for that position or is that like is that still contentious i don't think there was confirmation in either direction but as far as i know there has been like a ton of backlash and he it's not looking good so i would say probably not i'm just gonna go out on a limb and hope and pray but i have not seen any type of confirmation okay i see that yeah Um, again i'm glad people not say like caught it but like people are saying something about it yeah and it's also one of those things that like I get like I was saying, like, you know, it is a religious position. It it, it, it very well could not have any day to day uh what's the word? Uh it might not affect like any laws, but the thing too that it is it sends a signal that like does the Amir have an administration? That, that, that's yeah. Said, right? Yeah. That, that is saying that we are, we are accepting this behavior and this mindset. Mm-hmm. It it does send it sends messages. And Absolutely. It, it it does Yeah. And I I, just, I forget he. This is like the new guy after um, Cuomo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that's he's got like some shoes to fill. He's just some shoes to fill, but like, and it always feels like there's a uh, with these people. It's controversy, controversy, controversy after controversy. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can't just get like that really nice bus driver to be the mayor. <laughs> no. No. You you can't you can't just. It's always get, people that are like, oh, my buddy that it happens to be a massive homophobe. He'd be perfect for this position. Yeah, like, you Hello? can't just get like Pat, the local bus Which driver. Also, maybe Pat's not like qualified, but yeah, I, we we don't we don't know Pat. We don't, How come the qualified people are doing fucked up shit? We don't condone Pat here on this show. 
But, but also, I would like more Pats to become. That's true. I wa- you know what, Pat, if you're listening, Pat the bus driver in New York City, you could be mayor. You could be. It, 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 maybe not right now, but you can become someone who we could depend if on. If you believe in yourself enough, you fully could... You Pat could... 2020. I'm, I'm Pat 2020. Pat. I'm voting for Pat. <laughs> yeah, in the year 2020. <laughs> I just like saying 2020 because I know that, fuck, again, I hate bringing up the fucking the... Trump again. But I keep, other people, the people keep going, Trump 2020, like... Dog, it happened. It's over. It's over. It's done. That year's got coming good, but no, I just but, I love just saying blank twenty twenty because it's, it's, it's yeah. come and gone. But you know, speaking of things that are over, <laughs> we should uh, take a break. Yeah, let's take a break. And we're back with another jerk it with Josh, but this one's gonna be a little different today. Well, actually, no, we haven't done that many, so <laughs> they're all gonna be a little different. <laughs> um. Today we're going to talk about uh, food and bottoming coming from, you know, the the bottom of the pod. Hey. I don't, I don't know if we've ever established that dynamic that I'm, you know, I got the bomb pussy, you got the other. Uh, I have, I, you have the sausage casing, I have the sausage. <laughs> you got the meat. <laughs> Arby's. <laughs> we have the meat. So, have um, you ever been to an Arby's? I have. I actually remember when I used to be a Boy Scout. We used to get Arby's almost every day. Or, or every time we like went home from Boy Scout stuff, nice, we would get Arby's. Nice barbecue bacon. Oh my god! Bourbon. Oh, those curly fries Brisket. were so good. Anyway, anyways, yeah, <laughs> all those things actually would be horrible for bottoms. That's to eat. true. Very very. So yeah, I, I don't don't go to Arby's. Don't go to Arby's if you're now. a bottom. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so what? Okay, we're gonna kind of break it into like, two topics. Like, what's good and what's bad. Um, but also, like, well, let me talk about a little bit about how I handle food bottoming because I have, I don't know, I just have a titanium pussy. I can kind of eat whatever I want and still do the she do. She is titanium. Will I, will I get copyrighted if I sing that? Yes, probably. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll just cut that out. Because, like, um, I've had a, I don't know, like, oh, here recently, I we meet, me and, like, remember that guy that I was complaining that didn't talk to me? Yes. Well, we actually started talking just in time for Valentine's Day. Oh, uh, what? And he, th- we, we went out to have like, I had, we went out to like this place for dinner and I went back to his place and, you know, he, he went to town on my booty. Um, Love it. Really, yeah, really beat it up. Love it. Actually, it was really nice. A really good time. Oh, good. Um, and I had like a duck grilled cheese sandwich. Oh. With French fries. How it was so? so tasty. So fucking tasty. But on, and like, I had no problems. Okay. So, like, you know, some, yeah. some of us out here can get away with murder. So you are you like the type of bottom that can fully eat like triple cheese chicken alfredo and then like get your your gopher hole stretched out to like five honestly five miles. I'm eating the Taco Bell queso rita with extra black beans while I'm getting dicked down, sipping on that Baja blast. Hey. Um, but but sh- like, the thing is about what's not good about. Actually, no. Beans are actually not that bad for bottoming, because what you want is fiber, and specifically you want water soluble fiber. That's a big one, because the tell us more. The insoluble fiber, I, 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 fiber is good in general, but the soluble fiber kind of like it acts as like a what's the word? A binding agent of sorts. It's gonna make it more intense down there. Ooh. So you want water soluble, because so it gets you clean, but it doesn't make it. It doesn't make itself known. <laughs> yeah. Which also, like, that's the thing, too. You know, I I was literally just talking about this the other day. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, like, clean, I am i don't consider myself... Ugh, burp. Sexy. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I do have extreme body issues, but that's, that's beside the point. Um, I, like, I don't consider myself one of those tops is you know how like some tops out there will be like if i find even a speckle of brown on my my candy cane when i exit (laughs) your sausage casing yeah so you were saying you're not you're not you're not too uh like critical so i i swear to god people are so fucking like some tops out there, they're so picky. Well, also, I think, too, like, if you're wearing a condom, then, like, there's already a barrier. Yeah. But which it, which yeah. you should be wearing a condom. Yes. 
Um, I, 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 I will be saying maybe I don't practice what I preach, but has, we, how does we, it say go? Yeah. Do as I say, uh, not as I do. Shut the fuck up. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Yeah, um, just for like, just to go on record here, we here at the latest in the gayest podcast preach safe sex, safe sex, get tested, get tested, wear condoms if you can, use prep. Or I mean, it's if you're somebody who who prefers the au natural feel, make sure you're clean. Yeah, but I like, suppose then get tested regularly. Yeah, but. You know, but also do what you want with your body and all that kind yeah. of good stuff. But it's like it's it's one of those things that you you know it's best for you, mm-hmm. and I encourage you to do what's best for you. But I, I swear to God, some tops are so picky. Like they are. You guess what, Terry? Also, you have you got little little brown bits inside your sausage casing. The only difference is you're the one that's piping the sausage <laughs> instead of you know. <laughs> The other way around. I'm not describing genitals. Am I know. I? Okay, no, no, no. You are, but like, it's just, yeah. I, 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 it's the way you're doing it. It's I'm really wild try- to I'm me. Really trying, it is wild. I'm, I'm really trying my best here. No, I understand. But some, some yeah, of them, they, like, they demand like yeah, a porcelain. They, if there is literally fucking... even like the tiniest speckle of, <laughs> saying of, speckle. It's of brown <laughs> on their, you know. <laughs> It's it's over. Uh, it's over. And here's how you can avoid that, because let's get. <laughs> let's. But anyway, enough about sausage casings. Uh, let's let's get back into some things you want to that. avoid is dark meats, uh, artificial sweeteners. Really? With your zero coke, yeah. Oh, artificial sweeteners. I are... didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I, I guess what you just gave a bottom. Ah! You. This is this is a hate crime. This is a hate crime. This, I just this... prevented. Josh from having sex tonight. Remember how I said that we can't be complacent about crimes in our community? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Anyways, um <laughs> It's okay. You didn't have any plans of getting laid tonight, did you? But you never know. <laughs> love love finds a way. Love is funny like that. It really I is. I could be at the McDonald's drive through and I could, you know you know how like I go to hand like the person at the drive through like yeah. my credit card and he touches my hand a little bit yeah and it sparks fly you you and you and the hamburglar are, are making eye contact. Uh, i would say hamburger i grimace really? Gr- i do grimace hamburglar is he does crime but like isn't, what if we have a ch- but isn't that like the bad boy aspect of it all i don't know if i'm into bad boys though oh okay i like i like i like you're, the, you're I, into good boys no i i like you want you don't want like a motorcycle driver you want like an account- i could do a motorcycle i i, I don't want like, like uh, you know wells fargo accountant but i also don't want like known criminal okay so if if you like you know do yeah. a little bit of coke and like you know on the weekends that's fine as long as you're safe about it but uh it's so off topic <laughs> i don't even know how to re- all right foods <laughs> no dark meats no artificial no dark sweeteners. meats no artificial sweeteners just avoid like super unnatural i'll say uh, how to say unnatural because it's uh, most things are natural everything has to be natural in some way because everything comes from nature but like Avoid highly processed and highly f- animal-based fats. I'll say it like that. That stuff will get, will fuck you. Unless you're me. Well, the, but for most of your sensitive uh, booties out there, you know, you got to avoid that kind of stuff. Yeah. And also it, avoid coffee, cigarettes, and uh, what else was it? You just you just eliminated like a main food group there for, for gays. Mm-hmm. Iced coffee. coffee. Yeah. Yeah, I'm we, sorry. We, we live off of that shit. And I'm, I'm just gonna say is it's not it it the tops aren't out here posting their iced coffees on their TikToks. Speak for it's... yourself, but <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? You know you're right. I generalized. I, that was insta- I, I like to apologize for that for calling you out like that. I'm, um, I'm sorry that you feel that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, drink lots of water. Avoid tobacco and coffee. And um, oh, there's another thing too. Also, oh yeah, there's supplements like. I think prep right is like a mm-hmm. yeah, and then there's also um, there's like fiber supplements out mm-hmm. there that you can take. And like, also again, like yeah, if if you're somebody who who frequents it, it's uh, up the piping bag. You can you can take like a, a fiber supplement to keep yourself regular. I think too is like also like this is also like a thing you could talk. To. Feel free to talk to your doctor about this kind of shit. Yeah feel more feel obligated perhaps don't don't inform let me just say this do not inform your doctor that you're getting your medical info on bottoming 
from us. Oh yeah, disclaimer: we we are not medical professionals. No, we do. Nor this is this is uh, this is casual advice. Yep. for entertainment. This is yeah. not to be taken as gospel truth. That should have been said beforehand, but don't and, be like God. <laughs> yeah, but speaking of iced coffee, yeah, let's go take a break. Let's go take a break. And we're back. All right. This week, there's a there's a little TV program that goes by the name of Rupalina Andre Charles's race for drag queens, <laughs> the the layman's term. Um, this was, and, uh, this was a gasser a of an episode. Yeah. It just, it was, I'm like, I hate you, you so get, much. I hate you my, so much. My, I, I don't want to do this did podcast you, did anymore. You get my far- I fucking my did. My fart joke. What, what? Okay, we'll get to the meat of it. Oh, they, okay. they kind of like stole this moment that could have been really funny for each individual. These, like, these queens have these really great moments from this episode and from this like acting challenge. Yeah. But the entire thing was just a fart joke i and you know honestly when rue was like you know i just couldn't put my finger on what was missing but then i realized and i was like did they i first a second my mind was like i wonder if they like did they film something separate with like the eliminated queens yeah i'm like is is I was expecting straight, something a is, bit more. Is straight amorphosis coming back? Straight amorphosis. I'm no no shade to Maddie Morphosis. Um, hi Maddie. Um, but like, and then it was ten fucking minutes of just fart joke after fart joke, and like I I, I just I swear to I'll be okay. So I I watched Drag Race on Philo, which is basically a, a, a was a DVR uh, recorder. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've heard of that. And in all honesty, I couldn't tell you what anyone did in that challenge because I just skipped it. I was like, you know, I I can't do this. I can't I can't, I can't do this. Yeah, I when I, when uh, when that portion of the episode came on, I was like, I was in the middle of putting my laundry away. Once it started, like getting halfway in, I'm like, you know, I think I have to go flip. Uh, I, I I think I have some lawn. I think I got some underwear. I gotta I gotta put away. Let me go. Let me go do. Let me go take care of that. Let's 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 go. It just like if if y'all there's like kind of a running joke that RuPaul's sense of humor is like as long as you make some kind of joke about like your butthole, you will make her laugh mm-hmm. and you'll win the challenge. If that wasn't enough proof that all you need to win RuPaul's drag race is a fart joke. Well, I mean maybe not win. Yeah. Like to like get like notoriety. Like, oh my. Also, Rockem Sakura is fucking. She sh- must shook. I. They should have like credited her on this challenge because I am st- just for the record. I am still bitter about that elimination. Yeah, I. I don't, I don't think she deserved to go home. I think too. I don't think she lost lip sync. I don't. No. Think, I don't. I don't think Britta should have been in the. I don't think Britta did a bad job lip sync. I don't think. This is nothing against Britta, but I don't think she deserved to be in the bottom that week. No, I I just like Rockham. I she's so good. She's so funny. She's really cute. She's, she's great personality. Good at drag. She has a lovely butt. Yeah, like I she's so good at what she does, and I swear to God, I when she got eliminated that episode, I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like, uh, but I. I I, well, I I genuinely this this episode. Just... Here's the thing too. There was the the any moment that was good is now like ruined. Yeah. Because of the fart jokes. Another thing too is like Lady Camden really came into on this episode. Yeah. But now she is she won the fart episode. It's like of all this was gonna be yeah. That is not like... the challenge you want to have. You like winning the ball is really good. Winning snatch games really good. Yeah. Like Those things Willow, are like Willow Pill won won the ball challenge, and that's like a thing you want to win. Yeah, that you'll be known. Like queens are known for winning challenges that are cool and impressive. And now this is supposed to be Lady Camden cementing herself. Yeah, as a she was going to win this big acting challenge, this like big dramatic acting challenge that which she didn't even know what part she like was getting herself into. She was just like, Fuck I, it. I I I I have a I have another thing I want to say too. The RuPaul's Drag Race acting challenges of late have not been written that well. And for the, and when I was watching them do the filming, 
I actually was thinking, oh, this is actually kind of a good idea. I think I'm actually going to like this. Yeah. But leave it to fucking Drag Race to take something you like and fucking ruin it. It was going to... I was I was expecting, like, a legitimately dramatic, like, and like s- soap opera of yeah. some kind. And then... I wanted it to be so overly dramatic that it was funny. Yeah. I was, Not like, I was waiting for jokes. some, like, big dramatic thing. And, yeah. And then it was literally just, like, ten minutes and... of... Fart jokes. I, I can't feel this is all at Lady Camden's expense because she had that killer runway. That fucking Freddie Just, Mercury oh my, falling yeah. over bullshit is wasted on the fart episode. Shout out to Lady Camden. Um, I have already, literally last night, like 15 minutes after the episode ended, we were like 15 minutes into Untucked, I've already pre-ordered my Lady Camden Freddie Mercury t-shirt, which you can now do. By visiting Lady Camden's mm-hmm. merch website, I do not know it off the top of my head, but fake fan, fake fan right here. Go go to her Instagram and go to her link tree and buy some merch from Lady. And that's Camden. A, that, that's a thing too. I think a lot of people, including myself, I'll, I'll admit I was wrong in this. I kind of written off Lady Camden as like gonna be like almost a Jan figure, where it like gets close but never quite gets the win. Yeah. I thought I thought that's what they're gonna do with Lady Camden, and and to like she proved me wrong. That oh, great, uh, yeah. I mean, allegedly she did good in the chump, but she uh, that that runway alone was a winning. As of late, she has proven herself mm-hmm. a. Front She's runner. proven herself to be a competitor and someone who is worthy of ad- not let's say worthy of admiration, but like oh, absolutely. Who is um who who deserve who deserves a spot in like the drag race uh conversation? Yeah, like I know. Also, here's this the thing too, Diabetti. I get. I can't say for uh, anybody else. I, I'm glad she got her like top placement, and I'm glad she she, she had good runway. And I think she did on the challenge. I didn't actually fucking watch it. Yeah. But he, I mean, also, I'm never. I'm not a drag queen. I've never been on Drag Race. I'll probably never be on Drag Race. But if I were Diabetti, I would almost double down. Because <laughs> like, because she gave a very TV apology. Yeah. I wish. I mean, not not to say that it not to say that it was insincere, but like, part of me wishes that she um double down because th- I think that'd been better TV than like this weird shoehorned in apology yeah because like to me would have been really like tv it would have been like if she was like you know george i'm really sorry george i'm really sorry yeah i'm sorry you got a win you didn't deserve deserve i'm sorry that you feel this level of accomplishment for a challenge you did not deserve to win supposed to win that 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 would have been like great tv which i i I don't agree with that sentiment necessarily but no just saying if I, I I don't know because Diabetti kind of dug herself as such a hole that I think like I yeah. mean I think yeah. and I mean here's the thing too as annoyed as I was in that moment like I I still am like a little bit annoyed at her for you know transforming herself into bitter Betty oh, Lord but I will admit it was fun to watch it lit a, it did light a fire under her and lo and, and George's behold, too yeah and George's... lo and behold she ended up in the top she didn't win but she ended up in the top and the thing too is that also and hopefully this will finally shut her up i can't th- oh no it's not gonna shut up I, I i hope she complains a little bit more um uh, that's also it's a weird thing about drag race and like uh, how we interact with the television show i don't know if like other tv show contestants get like the same vitriol that drag race contestants do yeah also the thing i want to talk about too is the very powerful untucked moment yes very amazing yes Having oh, it was a Bosco and Jasmine Kenny yeah. come out as trans. It was, it was very yeah. powerful and very heartwarming. Yep, loved that. Well, also, wait, did I thought um, Bosco was uh, non-binary or she's non-binary, but she wants she, to right, 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 right. Yes, go Le- in a lean in a direction towards a yeah, yeah, yep, okay, more towards the feminine presenting yes. side, and, which is very lovely and very valid. Which also to me, I don't know, maybe this is problematic. But knowing now that Jasmine Kennedy is trans, it makes me like that she sent home Maddie Morphosis a little bit more. I'm like... Drag her. Drag her. Slay her. Like, our, our trans queen sent home the straighty. To me, that there's something a little oh more. Oh, my I, God. And also, like, I wish oh I, 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 I wish that Jasmine would have leaned into that argument more. Because then it would have been like, I don't know. something. It, about, would, have, it would have been good TV. That's it would have been good sure. TV. No, it was good TV. Yeah. And also, that lipstick was oh, fucking yeah. phenomenal. No, Jasmine... They, um, Again, too, Jasmine you, Kennedy did well that? this challenge, but she did well in the fart challenge. Yeah. I'm pissed. Have you heard that TikTok sound that's like, 
Why am I the only one that's popping my fucking pussy right now? <laughs> I have not. Heard I saw it. I saw this um I saw this TikTok where it was like Jasmine doing her lip sync against Maddie, <laughs> and then the background sound was literally just like, "Why am I the only one that's popping uh, my fucking pussy right now?" Oh my god! And I'm like, I could not agree more. Jasmine popped the living crap out Murdered of her pussy. And also, I think too. Which it's really strange that I don't think we get very often is that Jasmine is almost presented as like an a- antagonistic force in the season. Yeah. And that she's taken a complete like Yeah, because Corn Yeah, her and Cornbread had that whole moment of like, girl, shut up. Yeah. But now she's like now she's something I'm willing to like at first I was annoyed. Which with also her, shout and now out I want to root for her. Shout out to Cornbread. Which also we it's just a cor- uh, elf in the room. We miss Cornbread. Cornbread is gone, and I think that is why no one went home this episode. They, need, they needed a filler episode. To yeah. Like, because they'd be like, we had that this many episodes for the season, so. Yeah, but like, anyway, shout out <laughs> shout out to Jasmine Kennedy. And Bosco. I don't want to overshadow Bosco. Yeah, shout out to Jasmine Kennedy. Shout out to Bosco. Y'all, we stand. And to Carrie Colby for really being there. For, for inspiring yeah. a whole new, whole new generation. And with that, we're going to take a break. Oh my goodness, Alex! Wow, th- thank you for joining me. I'm for another wonderful episode. I'm so honored the in the game. <laughs> to have you here in my bedroom where I sleep mm-hmm. and have intercourse. Oh yeah, it's just oh, we, also way to expose us. Like yeah, we're we're in a fucking bedroom right Ooh. now. Oh, yeah, oh. no, that's like a thing too. We are we're a very relatively new podcast. So yes. we don't have a professional recording studio. We're doing this yeah. currently in my bedroom, like our in like my apartment. Our quote unquote tech producer, yeah, which is just Alex's boyfriend, yeah. on the computer, yeah, is sitting on his bed, just yep. kind of watching yeah. the recording. So I just want to to go on record how humble our beginnings are. Yes, and they may stay very humble, and but they but it might take off. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe some of the arguably problematic things we said in this podcast will boost bolster us into uh, deleted bald deleted bald yeah <laughs> to, to fandom or not fandom fame but whatever. speaking of deleting it bald what is it wait what does that even mean <laughs> you should you should go follow us on all of our social medias <laughs> facebook instagram twitter and tiktok at t-l-a-t-g pod we post stuff on there sometimes honestly it's all alex that's I'm not gonna lie. true full transparency I, I should probably get more involved with the uh, <laughs> social media aspect of it, but go I'm, to the social media because uh, I will be I will be getting involved. I, I will be getting involved, and that perfectionism will go away. But also, while you're there, we have a link tree to um, the uh, oh my god, I'm just, my brain is off today. Some really amazing charities and organizations. Charities and organizations. We are we stand hope, by yeah, stand we beside. Would, we love for we Black would, History Month. Yes, because it is still <laughs> February and it is still Black History Month. Also, so if you can, mm-hmm. please take some time to go to our link tree and even just donate a little bit of your time, money, time, money, anything yes, you can, money to some of these amazing organizations or educate yourself. Yeah, education so is just as important to, to be help, a good ally. Yeah, to help empower and stand with the Black community, which would be lovely. also uh, in light of. Some TikTok with the the Black History Month TikTok live thing that happened is a live stream, I believe. Um, it's just a friendly little reminder to, uh, while it's important to uplift and uh, engage with uh, Black History Month, even as a non-Black person, because that kind of stuff is important. Um, do not occupy space meant for Black voices. Let's be mindful of where we exist. I think that is something that needs to be said. Absolutely. Uh, not, not, not to like drag it on through the mud, but just saying. Yep. Be be mindful and respectful. Absolutely. When you engage in these things. Yeah. And with that, we are excited to see you for the next time on the latest. And the gayest. Uh. Goodbye.